do you think separates like a mom and pop real estate investor versus a sophisticated investor? And in a way you put together a program that made it that, you know, that looks at it a little bit more, you know, trans not transactional, but in a more, I don't know, in a more complex systems. Um, so, yeah. So, uh. I was never involved on the acquisition side of the business uh -huh. as long as my father was alive. May he rest in peace. Mm. Um, he handled all of the decisions regarding acquisitions. But what I learned from him is never fall in love with your real estate. That was one of his mantras. Even though, and, and to be able to move from sector to sector to pay attention to what's happening in the economy. Mm. Um, and what what's happening, I think, regionally, for example, he started off as a builder. He built very large multifamily projects because he felt that there was, um, that times were changing. Women were entering the workforce. They needed childcare. So we would build large projects that had childcare facilities. Oh, wow. Um, and uh, preschools and all kinds of um, gym equipment, you know, outdoor parks for the kids within the complex because he understood that as women were entering into the workforce, they needed to be able to leave their kids safely at home. And uh, I think he was really at the forefront of that. And then when he saw that rent control was coming, he yeah. said he watched it happening in New York and in San Francisco. And he said, now is the time to move out of this sector, to get out of rent control before it hits California. Let's move into another sector. So then he moved into shopping centers and actually at the time that I joined him, he had just acquired a group of shopping centers or was in the process, he was doing due diligence. And he sent me down to the seller's headquarters and I had to abstract all the leases. So that was my first um, exposure to retail and shopping center leases. And then from there, he moved into office buildings and he moved into single family homes. He was, he moved, he was originally only in California and then he saw that California prices were too high and he wasn't getting the returns he wanted. So he started looking out of state. And I think that's really what, um, that was a big take home for me. And that's the difference between maybe a mom and pop investor who doesn't see the big picture and holds on to what you would call legacy properties uh, some of our properties are legacy properties. They've been in the family for 35 years, but others are not. There are a couple of properties that I just bought in the last couple of years, and uh, it was a different market than what he had gone into. We bought in Colorado, and um, we bought single-tenant retail properties, which he wasn't really looking at. So. Uh, sometimes I have issues with my partners who want to hold on to things that don't make sense anymore. Right. And it's difficult to try to educate them also about reinvesting in properties that owning real estate. And I think this is another thing that differentiates a more sophisticated investor from a mom and pop is it's not a passive asset like owning stock or like owning bonds. You have to, you have to put on new roofs. You have to repair parking lots. You have to upgrade technology, whether it's taking an apartment building and moving it to keyless entry and putting in um, Amazon lockers and, and you know all the things that, that are changing in the marketplace, you have to keep up. Yeah. And so with a lot of mom and pop investors, they take their distributions, but they don't think about saving for the future and reinvesting in the building.